Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Dilesh. Until okay, let's begin now. I've already dropped a message. Uh, so I received uh, the solutions from Rohini only, right? The for the homework I gave you to solve the same PDF set of six questions on average speed. Who else mm -hmm. has done the homework? Ma'am, I, I have done didn't the understand the third question, ma'am. Ah, it's okay. I was not able to check it because I had another class that time going on now. Like you were messaging. So already I was checking the class. So wasn't able to correct it. But how many of you have done the homework? Raise your hands, please. Ma'am, the is the first one in decimal. Pardon? Ma'am, is the first question answer in decimal? Ma'am, the second question is in decimal, right? Um, you do one thing now. Uh, for the first question, I'm asking you people now message me the answer personally in the chat. Okay, ma'am. Don't share it to everyone, to me only. With the units, please, Ritej, with the units. I'm a cent. This is for the first question, very Okay. Any more? Okay. Now, should I convert it into kilometer per hour or meter per second? Yeah, that's fine. If question is asking you to 
get the answer in any specific units, then that is compulsion. That becomes compulsion. But if no such thing is mentioned, then it's your choice completely. Okay, fine. Fine. So all of your answers are correct. It is 70 kilometer per hour. Just give me a minute. Yeah, so uh, almost all of it, uh, you have got the answer 70 km per hour. And Shritij, you found it in meter per second, that is 19.44, that is also correct. 70 km per hour, if we convert in meter per second, it will be the same value. Okay, next question, second. For the second question now. Mom, I sent. Hmm. Rest all. Ma'am, I also sent. Okay. Ma'am, wait a second, chat is like loading. Yeah. Ma'am, I sent. Good, good. What we call the wish, Shritej has sent. Mm -hmm. Fine. The way Shritish and Romini and Advika, correct. All of your answers are correct. Third question. Aishwarya, no answer. Um, I'm just join now. I just I'm, uh, I'm not sure how to do the third question. No, the answers to those six questions on average speed. You are supposed to share me the answers in chat personally. We are on third question now. Second answer uh, is correct. 85.7 km per hour. Third. Third. For question number third, please keep sharing. Mama, send the answer. Hmm. You see from Devesh Rohini. Mom, third question. Hmm, third. Mom, that uh, I didn't understand. Okay. Mom, okay. even I didn't understand. Okay. The base 54, only 56. Any more students to solve the third question? No. Uh, fine. Uh, first, let's discuss all the uh, rest of the answers. Then we'll discuss the third one. Fourth, Divesh and Rohini, your answers are different. So I also need to see, look after this question. Okay. Divesh is found 54, Rohini 56. Fourth, quick, very quick. Ma'am, fourth is like a definition, right? Like we have to, like... Just a second. Okay, um, yeah. Like, that is how is average speed different from instant I mean, speed? If we can average speed to the maximum today. Fine, okay. So, let's move to third question. I the answer for the first one, 70 km per hour. Oh, first one is... Mom, per hour, right. Mom, I think I tried and I got the third one as 54. 54, okay. Let me also solve it now. Then we'll see. Car travels a distance of 150 km at speed of 50. After covering this distance, the car continues to travel for another 2 hours at speed of 60 km per hour. Okay. Let's solve it together. Basically, we need to get the average speed and beginning from the formula of average speed which is total distance upon total time give me a minute and now i also got 54 54 kilometer per hour give me a minute please ma'am i also got like i didn't got any answer Like I got confused. Uh, 
total distance it's on total time so it seems that the first car travels a distance of 150 and speed is given then after covering this distance car continues to travel for another two hours means there are two uh, cases we can say or two different journeys combining the whole uh, t2 is this much and this is s2 speed second okay and in first case we are provided with the distance d1 and i'm naming it s2 so by the formula total distance upon total time we need to have the distance and time values all together distance and speed is there so in first case we need to find time for the first case Time for the first case would be time formula comes out to be. Ma'am, time equals to distance by speed. So for the first case, it should be D1 by S1. D1 is 150 and speed given is 50. So we get 3 R. Okay. See why uh, means why I keep telling you uh, to be concerned about the unit cells. Like distance here is in kilometer and speed is in kilometer per hour. So that's fine. I can use these uh, simple numerics, uh, the values given here only. Suppose the distance was given in meter and speed is in kilometer per hour. So how can we deal with the two uh, units, you know, consisting of distance, one in meter, another in kilometer. So my focus is to, you know, uh, be concerned in regards to this while solving. Finally, you get the answer in meter per second, kilometer per hour, that's your choice. But in between, you should not deal with the two different units simultaneously. That becomes a problem. So that makes your answer wrong. 3R is the time for T1. Now, uh, for second, we have time, we have speed. For second, also, we need to get distance. Okay. Uh, distance for the second case. That is D2 will be speed into time, speed into time. Speed is how much? 60 and time is 2 R. Again, in the speed, we have kilometer per hour and time is alone in hours. So we get it 120, 120 kilometers. Okay. Now using this formula of average speed, total distance means D1 plus d2 divide by t1 plus t2 substitute the values d1 is 150 d2 is 120 One. and total time t1 was a uh, 3 r and t2 is 2 hours solve it now how much is it it is it So one student was getting 54, I guess, I mean, two second, two students were getting 54. That's correct. The one who was getting 56, please correct your answer. Yes, ma'am. I got 54 now. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If you like to note it down, please do. Else I'll clear the annotation. Okay, ma'am. I'm like, can you explain it once more? This third question only? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Car travels a distance. Uh, suppose uh, you know, a complete journey of a car is divided into two parts, the first part and the second part. Uh, car travels first the distance of uh, 150 kilometer and with the speed of... Uh, 50 kilometer per hour. We don't know how much time it took. This we don't know. And after covering this distance of 150 kilometer, the car continues to travel for another two hours. Here we know the time for two hours he kept traveling at a speed of uh, 60 kilometer per hour. But in the second case, we don't know how up to how much distance it traveled. Now we need to find out the average speed. So by the formula, we simply need the complete distance and we simply need the complete time. Okay. 
we had the distance in first case but not in second case we had the time in second case but not in first case so by using suppose in first case we are dealing with first of all by using the value of distance and speed we can easily find out time by the formula speed equal distance upon time by using this simple formula i got the value of time t1 and again by using the same formula i got the distance d2 okay so this way i filled up my both the empty spaces and hence now using this formula of average speed i can find out average speed okay. Is still uh, without? No, no, ma'am. So should we move ahead now? Noted. Ma'am, just one minute. Jan, ma'am. All of you. Ma'am, yes. one minute. Sorry, I already erased some part. Average speed was written here. Should I stop sharing now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. So, we were discussing about the time measuring devices, and our major discussion was on sun dial, right? Which uh, Egyptians used mainly. It started from that time, and uh, most of the sundials are already made, one in Uttar Pradesh, one we have in Rajasthan, in Jaipur, one we have in Delhi also, and at five total, five places in India, okay, have sundial. And not only India, but many other countries also used sundial. And it's been about uh, four to five hundred years, the people of that time used sundial. And uh, one more thing, the main thing about its dimensions uh, means it did not have any specific dimension, but the important part is that, you know, the nomon that we can use, we used a triangular a rock piece, you can say, or any such material which can cast a shadow according to the sunlight. It should be along or it should be parallel to the Earth's rotational axis. This was important. Right? Ma'am, can you repeat? The sundial, uh, the nomon fixed in the sundial should be uh, parallel or along the Earth's rotational axis. The axis, imaginary axis about which the Earth keeps on spinning. Okay. It's okay. See, this because sundials were the concept of measuring time quite long ago. Now a time also, but we with the advancement, now we have digital watches, not the analog one with the needle. We have digital. Okay, we have moved ahead so far. So just to read and how sundial used to work, we can make a sundial at home also. You know that. It's very simple. Should I tell you how you can make that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. For making, see, we already are familiar, aware of the limitations that it only works during daylight. And uh, I'm, I hope in the southern region at your places, it's not raining. Is it so this these days? Is it raining these days at your place? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma no, ma'am. No, ma yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma no, ma'am. So... It will hardly work if it is raining. Anyone who has completely sunny days now or time? Ma'am, me. Uh, me means who is there? Ma'am, Divyesh. Divyesh, very good. So, all of you uh, means make your sundial ready and, you know, 
whenever you find the day is clear please try to see that how it works and it actually works or not it will be a trial for all of us you can take a you can take a simply piece of paper or a paper plate or a cardboard okay simply take cardboard or is anything you can first mark the numbers over like main is 12 okay we know that it only works during the uh, in between the sunrise and sunset so no need to mark all the numbers mainly it would be okay fine do one thing just mark all the numbers according uh, and for that first you need to find out the center point right so how do you find the center point because this will be the point where we will be fixing the nomon uh, how can you find the center point if you have a paper na do one thing that you know fold the circular piece of paper so that it appears it looks like a semi circle don't make a crease here don't make a crease just simply okay try to find out this vertical part over here and then open the piece of paper and then fold it first you have folded along this line second fold it along this line okay when you fold it along the second line you will find such uh, and the point of intersection of these two axes will give you the center point is it clear yes ma'am so yes ma'am if you if you already had a circular plate this is the way to find out or else if you are uh, you know tracing out the paper with help of that compass then no need and already you have a center okay so after finding a center center point you have the two axes also so try to write the numbers correctly with the correct term. like you know 1 2 3 4 sectors dividing the four equal parts 12 six what i am writing sorry <laughs> this is 12 3 6 9 and others in between the two distances you can mark uh, according to the degrees or according to the ruler make the proper distance accordingly you better know how to draw a clock now you can fix a pencil or a pen or a rod or anything but that should not feel so heavy on the paper or cardboard please select the uh, nomon accordingly that it should be light enough so that the paper can you know uh, be at the weight of that nomon now one important point to notice how uh, select an open area to place it and how will you select means how to place it in what direction simply anywhere no so the thing is do you have magnetic compass at home hardly we use comp the keeps compass at home i know i have a solution for this is anybody asking me something okay i have a solution for this uh, because he usually do not keep um, compass at home all of you are having smartphones Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, what? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're asking for a compass. Magnetic compass. I'm asking magnetic compass. Yes, ma'am. I have a magnetic compass. You have? Ma yes, ma'am. Ma no, ma'am. Okay. Those uh, switches you have, right? Ma'am, I am sure. Ma'am, can you? you ma'am, if you can see my screen, I'm showing a compass. I need to stop sharing. Na, this. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Great. Great. So that good. so we already know if you have you must be knowing it that it aligns in the geographical north south direction automatically right right or not yes ma'am yes ma'am for those who do not have the magnetic compass uh okay ha ah, can you people see my screen yes ma'am so you can easily install the magnetic compass uh, on just a second hmm you can easily install the magnetic compass app or it is some in some phones it is inbuilt right uh, magnetic compass so you can see the north uh, point uh, in the red color take this phone or take the magnetic compass in the open area along with your sundial and the 12 mark on your sundial should be along this north mark should be in the direction of the needle marking the north on magnetic compass okay ma'am okay this is the important point to note rest you better know how to mark the center point how to mark the numbers on the clock that's so easy
so keep this in mind and find the best day for you to work if single day do, do not work try on some other day but and you know how you can verify that it is showing the correct time or approximate time also get your watch along with it means does it match with the exact actual time or not okay ma'am is it this one i mean in the form please everyone put on your cameras half of you have turned it off how should i see turn your cameras on everyone yeah this one only yeah this one shrutij great it will be very interesting because anything which we learn by activities like learning by doing so most of the doubts get clear when you uh, learn by doing okay so try to make the sundial and do that ma'am now let's move ahead ma'am i have a doubt yes roini i'm like basically the the, the sundial right like uh, by on that like the numbers were till 12 or till 24 like do they know no, that no, no. that 12 up to 12 only yeah when you have seen the numbers 24 on the clock okay yeah, ma'am fine ah uh, so uh, listen i um, i can recall that you know we have finished up uniform speed and non uniform speed but i forgot to tell, tell you the graphs so we will uh, learn graphs at the last only now let's continue with time after the ancient time measuring devices then came up the phenomena of you know making the wall clocks properly so how did we move to this level actually uh people uh, used the concept of periodic motion to lead towards the concept of wall clock now what is periodic motion ashwat will you tell what is periodic motion man the motion which repeats itself after a fixed interval of time yes okay just a second i mean like there are some cuckoo clocks like like uh, when the time is 12 like the bird comes and like it does uh, uh, sounds just a second so the concept of pendulum was used for the periodic motion <coughs> hmm how do we draw a pendulum a pendulum is nothing complex but some simple you know we have a rod here which is fixed this is a fixed support you can say a long thread or a long string um is holding a metallic bob okay it is made up of metal known as a bob bob this is known as long thread it should be long and this is a rigid support so if we make the bob get displaced in suppose if the bob is here resting this is known as the rest position or the mean position if we displace the bob up to some certain distance let's say here at point a and release it at point a the bob is uh, gonna move to uh, towards the mean position let's name this position as uh, b 
and then move further away in the opposite direction and rise to the same height as up, um, as the height which we displaced it earlier in the direction of a okay so you can also try this um, by an activity that the distance up to which we will displace it on one side it will move and it will rise to the same height on the other side it means that it is taking a, a fixed time in moving towards a then coming back to b then further moving to point c so this uh, became the periodicity and this concept was used okay ma'am mm -hmm. ma'am we have done an activity uh, of uh, pendulum in class okay what's that ma'am means like uh, we use the pendulum and a uh, stopwatch to find the time period ah uh, great Very good okay so that pendulum in the laboratory you used ah uh, yes ma'am Okay, that's great. Uh, I'll tell you how to take it at home also. Hmm. Ma'am, so the motion of a pendulum is is uniform. Uniform motion when it maintains the speed. See, now I should say that if we can create perfect vacuum, then the motion of pendulum can be uniform. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yeah now listen uniform by listen Roini by uniform I mean that it will take a fixed interval of time okay you listen uh, first complete uh, definition of uh, this periodic motion now it will move from A to C through B and give a slight pause at point C then it will again move towards A through point B so this is gonna happen and if we can create perfect vacuum the bob will keep moving but can we actually create vacuum perfectly? Means not a single air molecule, not a single dust particle. Is it possible? No, ma'am. Yeah, that's why uh, because of this uh, fact only, the perfect motion in the pendulum is not also seen. Means after a certain time, after making certain oscillations, it will be observed that it stops by itself. Why? Due to air resistance. Because perfect vacuum is not possible. Right? So this is motion. You can say it is a damped motion. Damped means it will automatically stop after a certain period of time. Okay, so ma'am. The idle pendulum that if perfect vacuum is there, it is bob is metallic and you know the length has a good enough string, the thread has a long enough string. Then it will keep on moving after a phase interval of time and it repeats itself. So this motion is known as periodic motion also. Or you can say because periodic motion is something which repeats. But and other we can also say oscillatory motion. As oscillatory motion. Mainly it is known as the oscillatory motion and for periodic, you know, what is the reason? Why oscillatory? Because the bob of pendulum moves from the center or mean position to its extreme position. These two positions are known as extreme position, A and C. A is also extreme and C is also extreme. The last position where bob gives a pause and then moves back. Is it okay? Now question comes, what is an oscillation? Okay. Can anyone tell me what is an oscillation? Ma'am means like uh, when mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. bob mm -hmm. moves an oscillation from point C to A and again from A to C. Okay, got it. Uh, the three different ways are there to decide, although there can the infinite number of ways but by the positions we have marked let's uh, start it from b point only okay this is the main means from b only we displaced it first towards a so from b if it is going to a then coming back to c through b okay coming back to c and then coming back to b means obviously it will <coughs> the bob will not stop at b it will pass but we have to count the time when it just passed or when it is at B actually by the 
a keen observation. So from B point, this, then this, and back this. This is known as one oscillation. Clear? If we are beginning uh, the journey, the count from B. Now, if we are counting uh, from point A, then A to C complete, and then back to A. This is again one oscillation. If we are counting at point B, then B to A and then back to B is again one oscillation. So three ways we can calculate the single oscillation. Okay, you can note this down how to count one oscillation. You can note down this uh, uh, diagram of a pendulum also, extreme and pin positions. This motion is actually, actually oscillatory, but is also known as periodic motion due to repetition. And now you can write down what is oscillation. Please note down. When the warp moves, oscillation, when the warp moves from its center in the bracket right mean position. With the word center in the bracket, right mean position. Ma'am, can you repeat once again from first? When the bob moves from its center, that is mean position, to its extreme ends, TO2, its extreme ends, it is said to complete one oscillation. It is said to complete one oscillation. Ma'am, once, ma'am. Can you repeat? Sorry? Ma'am, can you repeat only once? Okay. When the bob moves from its center in the bracket right mean position, bracket close, to its extreme ends, it is said to complete one oscillation. Fine. Yes, ma'am. I hope you all have drawn this diagram also. Please, you people, please use your ruler to draw the thread in all three positions. If oscillation uh, you have written next write the time period also, this topic will be at least over. Uh, next write the definition of time period. The time taken by pendulum. The time taken by the pendulum bob. To complete one or oscillation the time taken by the pendulum bob to complete one oscillation is called time period pardon uh, ma'am can you repeat again the time taken by pendulum bob just a second The time taken by the pendulum ball to complete one oscillation is known as time Written? And we already wrote this. Yeah, I was telling this only. Okay. No, I'm like in another class. And oscillation already. Now I write the formula for time period. Time period denoted by capital T. So you can write time taken for, suppose uh, we do not know how much time one oscillation takes and 
time uh, we have counted 20 oscillation and a complete time we know then how do to calculate the time for a single oscillation it's very simple time taken for number of oscillations divided by total number of oscillation same number of oscillations is to be divided by okay fine okay dear is that fine yes ma'am Um, I'm after on the form of time period. I'm time period. Like, Mom, uh, you wrote in the formula time taken for something. Sorry? Mom, I cannot uh, like understand the formula. You wrote time taken for... Uh... For, let's say, certain number of oscillation. Suppose uh, you move the bob and you count the complete time. Uh, suppose... Okay, let me give you a, an example. You counted that 55 uh, seconds and 50 oscillations. You do not know. You did not count for the single oscillation. Oh, where it is? Hmm. You are observing the motion and you were counting the oscillations uh, exactly accurately. So complete time, you know, you it took to complete 50 oscillations in 55 seconds. Now, can you find a time period? Divide it. 55 by 50, you will get the time period that is time taken by one oscillation. Find it how much you are getting. Now 50. Pardon? Ma'am, 55 will divide it um, by 5 at 11 times. Not getting. I'm saying that uh, 55 divided by 5 is 11. Yes, ma'am. Can you please write in the chat? Your voice is not clear to me. 55 seconds I have written divided by 50 oscillation. Because one person cannot, you know, concentrate on number of oscillation. And how much time every single oscillation is taking, it's difficult. We need two to three people for observation. So he just uh, noted the, the number of each number of oscillation completed and the total time. So it means the answer would be 1.1 second. One oscillation took 1.1 second to complete. Okay. Is it okay? Mama, okay. Can take Please speak loudly or write in the chat. If you all have understood, we can wind up the class today and we'll continue in the next class. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Fine. I hope you have all have noted this down. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Fine, the bye to pay for the test. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.